Hello, this is uh, Dave Herman. I'm going to record a drawing session without any uh, any music in the background right now. Just going to be me. I just got my new uh, Manga Art Studio uh, let's see, 5, I guess it is. Something like that. Yep. And uh, it's the same thing as that uh, other program, Clip Studio. They kind of package them under two different names, but it's definitely the same program. And I'm going to do like maybe a sketch of a snow monkey. So uh, we'll see what happens. I'm not too familiar with the program, basically not at all. I went through and looked at all this stuff and uh, gives me an idea what's going on. So first thing I'm going to do is sketch a face. And I'll probably use a pencil. So I'll go up the side here and this looks like pencils. There we go. And I'll do a colored pencil, maybe 17 or 20, let's see, and like a, uh, a reddish. And let's see what we get here. Um, actually, I'm going to go to a bigger tip because I'm not used to doing them that tiny. And like this, okay? So we'll start with uh, an eye. Kind of go in there with an eye. Oh, it looks like I'm in black. Black's fine. I must not have pressed too hard when I hit the red. And then uh, their eyes are, you know, a little bit less than an eye apart, but we'll go an eye because when I put the nose in and everything, uh, it'll it'll work out. And uh, so I'm going to do that, get some eyes started. I'm going to have that tilt a little bit uh, this way, you know, so we have an axis where it goes kind of down this way. Just slightly, and then uh, we'll put the nose in. And the nose is, um, I'm looking at this reference, maybe two and a half times down, kind of. So, you know, I'm just trying this for the first time. <laughs> Let's see what we get here. It's going to be kind of funny, whatever I'm doing here, I don't know. And uh, something like this. And then, of course, you shape the an animal nose, always starts up here, kind of, and comes down like that. And they make that little shape, which I love that shape. Uh, it's just awesome. I love how, I wish my nostrils were cut like that, you know. Just like a wild animal. That's what I am. <laughs> wild, man. So a little bit of that. And, uh, uh, you know, these could be just a little bit higher up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move them up right now. Up to there. Anyways, there's enough around an eyeball to uh, uh, the, the eyelids and sockets and stuff there to kind of, yeah, up higher like that looks better. And then it has the eyeball itself is in a like a bigger lid on the top of the snow monkey. And uh, we all love snow monkeys, they're so cute. And uh, when we see them in the hot springs, you know, TV sets and Things like that. We're all wishing we had a moment where we're a snow monkey just soaking up that nice stuff there. So, yeah. And uh, kind of a brow up here. Their eyes are pretty close together. It's very strange when you see them in a still photo. It doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, like that. Kind of just hacking away. Still would move this, uh, the nostrils down even further, just a bit. So uh, I think what I'll do is I'll move his eye up one more time to there. Just gonna kind of think of it way up there, like that. Let me get my eraser. Let's see where their eraser is. Mm -hmm. This could be it. This will be. It. Hmm. What's that? Airbrush, brush, pencil, pen, eye dropper. That's my wand. Operation, move. Uh, there's an eraser. How about that? And let's uh, let's do some erasing. Get uh, a bigger tip. Wow, this thing is so tiny. All right, let's see if I got. There we go. Let's get some of that garbage out of there. 
you know, I'm not drawing super fast, obviously, and I'm kind of just judging what I see. It's starting to look, uh, kind of the spacing is sort of what I want as I'm looking at the distances and stuff. Okay, I go back to the pencil. This is pretty easy to use, you know. So, nothing fancy yet, but you'll see. We'll get there. Alright, so I'm going to come around here. I'm going to make an eyeball right in this area. And I put a lid uh, across and a lid underneath, like that. And same thing on this side, only this one's going to be uh, kind of uh, longer here and here. Kind of comes down like this, the shape on this old guy. I like that. Already got some kind of character in there, and I'm not even trying to develop character yet, see? So that's, that's cool, because I have the vision of where I'm going, right? You guys don't know what I'm doing. And uh, then we bring down his nose here. Let's shape that nose. They're, they're basically flat, you know, but a little bit of a protrusion. Not much on the snow monkey. So we'll kind of work him. It's kind of triangular, two triangles really making the uh, the nose on each side. And then this is kind of a, a flared thing here, like a lip. And the split in the nose. I love these splits and creatures. And this kind of comes down like so. And I'm just uh, I'm just dabbling, getting an idea where I'm going. And then uh, uh, let's let's see how we, if the curve goes like this, and then back like this to the lip, because the lip is uh, just a touch over here. We'll uh, we'll kind of go like that. Like there, split that difference, and they have a kind of a puffiness. These are just references for me as I'm drawing. Um, just taking my time actually making a snow monkey, and they get that little uh, little bit of face down here. These always look kind of puffy, like they you know fangs are hidden in there, and. Uh, you gotta watch out for wild animals because they got fangs, man. They got sharp teeth. Yeah, see, we're just building a monkey, getting a feel for him. And then his brow kind of goes up a little more before it hits the hair. So we're just casually doing this. What's nice about this is I figured out how to record my art. I was doing a 10 minute sketches for a year. Uh, the daily sketch just to get good with the software and things and I could jump into a program like I'm jumping into this cold and I'm more familiar now with uh, how these programs work so it's very it's been very good for me and a learning process as a guy just learning digital art self-taught but had a you know a two-year degree in art and a history of art uh, as a professional in the advertising world that quit 25 years ago and uh, um, the tattoo artist, which I still am, kind of a do them on occasion, licensed shop behind my house in Olympia, Washington. So you can look that up if you want on the internet, uh, tatguy.com, it's just short for tattoo guy, T-A-T-G-U-Y, slip that in, a little plug for myself, and as I start to develop the snow monkey. Okay, now I'm going to put some uh, character to him as far as his hair before we color this in and really play around. So he's, they're kind of bushy this way, you know, it kind of hangs out. And, uh, I got a little stachio that goes this way and uh, some hair and the face is pink. And then this is all going to be wet looking. And the hair kind of, you know, like so up like so just kind of snow monkeyish. I'm going to turn this into I think even an ink drawing so we'll see how that works uh, see they're kind of like a little miniature my lion monkey when I like it hmm. interesting all right so well, let's see what we can do painterly let's go into some watercolor I'm just going to play around here I had no notion what I was going to do going into it and I still don't so I'm going to go into brushes 
And I'm going to do uh, kind of a watercolor brush. And I'm going to change the densities and stuff here. So I don't want to have too much paint. Uh, density of paint. So this is like your opacity. Uh, color stretch, how far it spins out. Brush like that maybe. Let's pick a brush size and a color. And then we'll kind of just put some in the face. It's actually a pinkish more. So let's see if we go this way. I don't know how their wheel works. Uh, try to find me a nice pink. Let's just play with this for a second. Just stay here. There we go. See down here you got this little box. Give it a whirl. Throw down some paint. Uh, so that's watercolor, but that's not the color. Maybe I have to hit that box. Okay. Hit that box. Maybe it needs a touch more pigment. Let's see. Uh, got the color. Got the brush, brush size, the amount of paint. Let's uh, let's stretch out this color a little bit and see what that means. Still looks like it's drawn in black and black and gray. It's got me a little perplexed because I did pick a color. That uh, might be something I have to. Shows the color here. Hmm. Let's try something else. Let's try a little denser watercolor. Maybe I'm too loose, like a goose, going loosey goosey. Huh? And let's pick a bigger brush size. Let me go like that. It's my wheel and main tablet. There, that's too much. So edit, undo. So we are doing the right thing. We just got to find the kind of watercolor brush. It's so I'm going to go back to the watercolor brush. And I must have to, the way it works, you just got to have, let's see the amount of paint. There we go. Let's try that. I want to be heavy. I want to be able to see my color. Okay, so it's throwing down paint. It's the amount of paint. Brush size. Density. Let's see if we add more density. Okay, it's still uh, it's a little more dense, but I don't want to stretch this color, so let's, let's find out what these tools do. So this is, you know, it's building a face, but I want to see the pigment. And uh, it's kind of confusing, so let's add more paint. I guess we'll say 100% paint. We don't know what they... See, that's just filling it up with... Uh, Something I don't want. So I'm taking that down. I'm going to raise the density of the paint. Let's see. And that's still in black. Hmm. So, let's see what happens if you do running watercolor. Okay. So let's go. Let's undo these. Edit, go back. We're going to undo, edit, undo, edit, undo. Just undo a bunch of strokes here. It's okay, we're learning. Uh, and I'm having some fun, just relaxing and making a fun video. Showing you how I actually experiment. Not too worried about this. Okay, so now let's just uh, let's throw down some pigment. Okay, so there we go. So that's a little heavy. So less density. Let's see, can I do that? Yeah. And there we go. I'm going to try this a little bit. Put some here, put some here. His eyes. Just stroke it out a little bit. 
you know, it can happen really fast, but I guarantee if you're doing this at home yourself, trying to learn, you're going to do it this way. And that's kind of what I'm showing here is how I experiment my way out into this. I'm going to go over this with different colors and do different things, but I'm just starting to get a feel for Mr. Monkey. Okay. Let's make some of that there. Get some of this in here. It's, uh, it's actually a brown in his nose, a little bit of a brown like that. Get some pigment in around the eye. Okay, not too worried about that. I should be doing this in layers, but uh, I don't. <laughs> uh, I guess I could do that. Let me see. How do we add a layer? So my guess is, let's see what this says here. Uh, let's try that. Boom. No, that does not add a layer. Uh, combine a layer, create a layer, mask, transfer, new layer, folder, new vector, apply mask, trash. Uh, I haven't read the book, so I don't know how to add a layer right now. Layer. Uh, no biggie. I'll work on one layer. I'm not gonna melt. So let's just do that. Let's put some color in his eyes. So, you, you know these things. As you watch me draw and bungle, basically I'm bungling. Let's call it bungling. Um, I'm trying to learn uh, the program, but I'm also going to try and make something interesting here. So I've already got some character happening here, and. Maybe this is a watercolor. It's kind of interesting. Let's put some pupils in there. So we can get these eyes rocking. So I'm going to go tiny here. I'm going to actually make the face a little bigger. See, that would be a good idea. So let me see where I can uh, scale that on my tablet. Uh, there we go. All right. And let's pull this over. This program works really good with the Intuos Pro tablet. Ah, yes, magnificent. Now, now let's uh, let's just keep playing with this. This is my uh, dabble first into this wonderful program that I bought that I'm hoping to really become uh, proficient at in the next year. And uh, if I do, I don't know if I'm going to. Uh, make manga art, uh, not really manga, I might I might illustrate a novel I wrote, a sci-fi book. Um, I've set such big goals. Maybe I won't, but I'll try. I mean, I don't know exactly where I'm going. I have basically checked out of civilization to work on my own schooling, you might say. I teach my things, myself new things all the time, I'm trying to be more fearless about it, and get more masterful in these things. And now that I work in Photoshop and I work in Bird Painter and I work in, uh, uh, what is that other program? I can't think of its name. Mischief, um, which is interesting, but they're not, this is quite a program. This has really ease of access. I mean, I have to create all these things in those other programs where they're pretty much, there's some ease of access here as far as brushing and painting. and It's pretty marvelous. I think I'm going to really enjoy working in this. And right now I'm, I'm watercolor, like I was doing it traditionally. Uh, and I'm happy, you know, this is my very first 15, 20 minutes into a program I've never used before. And it's working to me. So, lo and behold, that's pretty cool, man. Because that's what I'm all about, you know, like, uh, how can I learn quick? And, of course, there's years and years of mastering anything. So, don't, I don't take lightly to getting good at stuff. Uh, but, you know, see how character builds? 
And, you know, I, he, he's kind of got that shock look, or he's looking to the side. Um, you know, and uh, he got ways of doing stuff himself. So I'm thinking, you know, one eye's closer to me than the other. This is a little bit smaller eye. This is a little bit bigger eye. Everything's going to be bigger, pupil and so on and so forth. We have some glossiness to the top of the eye. Uh, you know, and I, this is just a practice and a practice in recording because I figured out a way to, to do these uh, at no cost for me. I found a special free software I'm enjoying right now to develop. It's not going to show the tools, I don't think. I'll know once I see this video, but for some reason working in these applications with this free software, it's not meant for applications. It has another purpose. I've kind of gleaned it, and uh, it's totally legal. It's just hidden. Uh, you got to find it. you got to search this program out. And uh, look at that. Boy, that's some nice watercolor stuff that we're getting at. And then this will come in closer here. So uh, I don't like doing those tiny, tiny brushes. There we go. So I'm going to do kind of a pink again, a very light pink. Future for now. And bring that eye, eyelid over here and down closer like that okay and when you magnify stuff you get a chance to do this now that's going to come over like that and then it, it wraps a little more tightly to the eye and then let's do a little bit of eyelid work over on this side and here See, because the animals really, they got character like a human, that's for sure. That's for sure. And then it's a darker a darker red, uh, kind of around the socket and the brow. The brow is like a, a beat-up kind of a brow. So they have, a, this is, I mean, a watercolor brush. I want to be in, let's see, running watercolor edges. All right, let's just do that. I don't want to start learning at all while we're on the air. Let's get the right color here, a little bit darker. And then this kind of goes across. And then this can come up in here. See what I'm, I'm really enjoying this program. Gosh darn it, this is so great. Because there it is, you know, it's happening. Right before your eye. It's, you can't rush everything. That, it's like, oh, I'm going to learn this in a minute and a half. Well, no. That's going to take six, eight months. Maybe less. <laughs> Probably a lot less in my case. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good about this program. And it's just dialing in densities and textures and stuff. You know, I'm creating this, but there's probably... Uh, I take time to get into the texture brushes. So let me get into like a cream yellow up here. That. Put some of that on the brow. Let's bleed that into there. And let's do a little bit of the hair. And see how the size of a brush uh, populates. That's not too bad. You know, that's not too bad. Now I'm very happy with the speed. It could be faster, you know, I could have like a gazillion powerful computer, but just don't make a ton of strokes all at once, and then there, you can almost be like real time. If you do gentle, it's real time, yeah. You know, if you did like 30 wavy, went like that real quick with your brush on there, man, that's probably going to process uh, <laughs> some kind of funky thing, you got to wait for it to catch up, so... Just, just do like you do, you know. Do like you do, like a monkey do. Beetle up a do. So, okay. Maybe not so much beetle up a do. All right. And now let's darken this up a little bit here. Uh, let's give him some character. So, people, you know, you watch the sketch and you get to see, you see my 10-minute sketches. 
and you think, well, what the heck is that guy doing? Well, 10 minutes is really, 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 really hard to create and finish art in. And I pressured myself for a year to do that. Because now I understand what's going on with this stuff. I mean, I'm going to be able to do some incredible art. And that's not to brag. It's because I've, I've paid some dues. And I committed a year to daily sketch for me. That's a lot, among all the other stuff I do in a day. And uh, that's that was worth it. And now, now you can see just where I'm going to go in the next 10 years. Uh, it's going to be something. The next 10 years, yeah. Because I don't really think of things happening in a minute and a half or stuff like that. Not anymore. I used to think, well, I'm just going to sit down. That's it. I'm a man. No. It's not like that. you got to really, you got to really, really face some dues. And uh, let's get an orange kind of going here. And put some of that out here. You know? And then... Uh, so this nose, let's, let's make that nose kind of work into space now, so there'll just be a line. Let's get some fur on there. Just a little bit. Get rid of these lines, you know. I'm making it happen. And, uh, you know, it's just a suggestion of stuff, you know. You not really have these hard separations, of course, in the real creature. So, we're going to just kind of build a creature. And he has more wrinkles than that. So we're going to get down some wrinkles here. This is really fun. I am enjoying this. So let's, uh, he's going to have a couple eyelid lines up here. And a couple here. And, uh, this character here and lock this in a little bit lock it in come down a little bit like that and uh, this is going to connect now so I'm going to kind of come down like this and connect to his nose like so and what a great nose they have so uh, we'll get some paint together and uh, let's, let's shorten this nose up to here. Put it like that. We got a little character there. And uh, let's see, again, a light shade. Boy, that's something. First time out of the box. Just out of the box, man. Totally cool. Totally digging it. Uh, and I'm going to work it. I think I'm going to really become an animal artist. I didn't know where I was going with this stuff, but now over the years I have uh, committed myself to drawing jaguars and cougars and serpents and snakes and rat birds and the eyes of all these creatures. And well, lo and behold, I'm kind of into it. I think I'm going to be a wildlife artist. I'll feel it. Boy, just out of the box. Okay, so that is really cool. Let's give him a little bit of character. Uh, there's some orange, heavy orange up in the brow. It mixes in. And uh, we're going to add some of those creases. Yeah. Bring that around. It kind of comes across the brow like that. Oh, take that stroke back. This is the one thing that makes digital art way better than traditional, is the ability to take back a screw-up right away. I did airbrush art, and I did formal art and all that. Man, when you hit, when you spray onto your painting, uh, after you've worked so hard on it, something that goes, falls in the middle of it or something, with the water and the airbrush, and, uh, you just, you know, you're walking around your studio breaking things and going, gosh, darn it, I'm crazy. And this is what I love about digital. I didn't want to get into digital, but the more I'm into it, and I'm way into it now, I love it. 
I love it. The potential is amazing. And sooner or later, I will make prints for sale. And it's going to happen. Right now, I'm just a novice. But give it a couple of years. It's coming. And, uh, old boy here, he's, he's starting to look cool. Because you get something like the human effect, you know, in these things, and then it has that character. Uh, and I try not to be real explicit at the moment with my art, with this guy. We're just playing out with him. But that's a kind of a good start to a face. So I'm going to call that part one. And thanks for tuning in.